Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover this question, which comes from the 2011 paper. It's question 9, it's worth 5 marks. What I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you get about 5 seconds to pause the video. And once you pause the video and finish the question, press play, and I'll go over the actual answer itself. I'll show you a sample answer, and I'll show you also the marking guidelines in terms of how you should have answered to get, to get full marks. And so I'll read the question now, and then press play when you're ready. You are required to plan and perform a first investigation to identify microbes in food or water. Complete the following table for your investigation. Dependent variable, independent variable, control, safe work practices to be followed. So when you're ready, press pause and then attend the question. Welcome back. All right, so I mean, the question itself is worth five marks and there's four things you need to talk about. So obviously, it's quite likely you're going to get one mark for each of these. And because there's more space here, probably two marks for this. So you should probably mention two safe work practices just to be safe. All right, so what you should have done to get full marks, so five out of five, would be identify dependent variable. Right? And remember, dependent variable is what we actually measure. So in this case, if you choose, the, for example, the food or the water, doesn't matter which one you choose, you should have talked about the amount of number of, of colonies, of pathogen colonies, the number of colonies, or maybe even the color of colonies. Um, identify the independent variable, that's what we change. If you would have chosen water, that would be the location. So for example, you might have taken toilet water, pond water, tap water, and compared them, right? That's your independent variable, that's what changes. Whereas food, you could have cho chosen, for example, cheese, see how much there is in there, cheese, milk, um, bread, etc., etc. So you've chosen different types of food to compare. That's this part. So independent variable would be food, uh, different types of food or different types of locations when it comes to um, water. Identify controls. So this is what we compare it to. And control in this case is meant to be something which is sterile. So in this case, I've chosen sterile water because we're meant to compare it to something which has no pathogens. So we can see that the actual pathogens that are grown there have come from the actual contamination as opposed to maybe our own fault in terms of maybe fingers or anything else. We always have control. And so we need to name the control. And we need to provide two risks related to safety precautions. So name the risk and how we can control the risk. And that will get you five marks. That's just a pretty easy five mark because there's not much to write. So what you should have written is something like this. For the dependent variable, it would have been stuff uh, something like number of colonies. That would have been would have gotten you a tick, or maybe a color. That's one something that you were measuring. You're trying to find out the independent variable. This is how what you change, right? So this, if you take water, it would have been where the sample is taken from, toilet water, and then you would have taken maybe also some water from a bottle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you're taking food, this is where you would have written and um, take a sample of cheese, take a sample of um, bread, take a sample of salami, whatever else, right? Different types of food. The control. So this would have been for water, it would have been sterilized water. So an area where there's no microbes at all. Right? Whereas with food, we've just been basically just an empty, a empty um, dish. It's an empty dish which has nothing in it. And then you would have had, and what I mean by empty dish, I mean an empty uh, Petri dish, right? So an empty agar plate that has nothing in it, no contamination. And then we've got safe work practice to be followed. So we need to name two. So for example, you could burn your hand when you're sterilizing the inoculating loop, right? When you burn your hair and hands, that's a problem. So that's the risk and a safety precaution you can take to make sure it doesn't happen. Take good care when you're sterilizing the inoculating loop, right? So you can burn your hand on the bunsen burner. Safety, make sure you take care when you're doing it. The risk, another risk could be that you grow these microbes and these could be really dangerous to humans. And a safety precaution, do not open, do not reopen those agar plates. And that's why I don't know why I wrote plante. Should probably speak plates. Basically, once you've done it, once you have these microbes being grown, don't open it again because you might be spraying those microbes once you have. So risk and safety. You should mention two. So if you did, basically, if you mentioned one you'd have, and you mentioned the other ones, you would have gotten four marks. But if you mentioned two, you would have gotten you five marks. So for each of these is a mark. And where did this question come from? It came from this dot point. So students will identify data, plan, and choose equipment or resources to perform 
a first investigation to identify microbes in food or water. So if you look at the dot point, it says you are required to plan and perform, so underline plan and perform, plan and perform, a first investigation, a first investigation to identify, to identify in food or water. So it is more or less exactly what the dot point was asking you to do. I hope that was useful.